Okay, a big red knuckles and a big red button. Combination together, fantastic. Sonic Boom, dude, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Uh, third day of the show, I'm hanging in there. Okay. Now, obviously, you guys are showing off Sonic Boom at this wonderful booth. We are. It's a different take on Sonic. It sure is. is. Yep. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, our goal was to make a character adventure story that you can have a shared experience with friends and family, sit down at local co-op, uh, play together. So the goal was to make sure that the other three characters are just as compelling. So all the changes we've done to the character, all the modifications to support our character adventure story. So that way when you know you, you run to the controller and the, and the first kid is, uh, is picking up Sonic, the other kids are not disappointed because they have to pick Amy or Knuckles or, or Tails. So uh, we wanted to make sure that their personalities shine through their banter and the story that's uh, that's a character adventure story and they uh, are sometimes at odds with each other but their personality also shines through their mechanics as well. Sonic is obviously a speed guy and his name is on the, the box so we know what he's all about but we want to make sure that uh, that speed component carried forward in his traversal, in his combat and, uh, and his speed obviously. Uh, Knuckles is all about power. For new fans who aren't familiar with uh, Sonic we wanted them to see the lineup of the characters and instantly recognize who they are. Uh, Knuckles being the bruiser of the team, with three punches he'll take out the robots. Sonic has his air dash as a special. Uh, Tails has his, um, his buddy bot that is a robot that he's created that will go after the robots and take care of them. But he's also got his uh, distance grenades that he's using. So for players who gravitate towards being more in the, on the back and uh, not engaging up front, they will gravitate towards, uh, for, towards Tails. And Amy is a lot more self-assured. Uh, she has her hammers, which uh, packs quite the punch. So she has a triple jump. She has a lot. She's a lot more agile. So for people who like that kind of gameplay, uh, they will gravitate towards her. So the goal was to make sure that again, it's just about the personalities and uh, this uh, very interesting dynamic that they have together. And they're not all subordinate to to Sonic. Uh, in fact, there's some cases where they argue with each other, and that's the fun part of. Uh, well, playing with these characters. Obviously, this is this is the biggest change Song has had since he came out on Dreamcast because we saw a change in the character design then. Now we have this. You just sort of talk about the challenges of of, of reshaping an icon. Sure. Uh, the advantage of working with Sega and Sonic Team is that they have been living with this franchise for 20 years. So they really understand it. Sonic Team in particular. So. When we were looking at where is our boundaries of how far do we go to make modifications, uh, Sonic Team was very instrumental to, first of all, they were very open-minded in uh, all the changes that we were uh, looking to do, mod the modifications, and, and they eventually we found the guardrails that would be part of our exploration as what makes Sonic no longer uh, Sonic in spirit. And we found that out by the wacky ideas that we put on the table, and ultimately what you see today was a combination of all the things that we felt were within the Sonic uh, DNA, but tweaked in a slightly different way to give you a different kind of experience. And when you have our industry grow up as, as far as it has, it's, we've been around for 30 years. Sonic is one of the grandfathers of the industry. He's been around for 20 years. There's not that many other characters that you can say that about. And I think you'll see that more in the comic book industry who's been around for you know, 60 to 80 years. They do things that are a little bit different with their, with their key characters a little different spin on them, different storylines, and I think you start to see more of that in our in our industry, in the games industry. And so you'll see uh, Sega being forward thinking and taking a different branch. We're not, uh, we're not taking over Canon. Canon is gonna continue. This is just a different branch that encompasses the toy line, the 3DS and the Wii U games, and the TV show. All those things on the Sonic Boom branch are very consistent in their approach in the universe. Just a few small things then. Sure, a few <laughs> small things. But, um, okay, talk to us about the actual structure of the game. What, yeah. How does it play? Uh, it's a character action exploration. So uh, to, to uh, support our character action adventure storyline, the, the, the whole aspect is you know, exploration and discovery. We wanted uh, the team to, uh, to go through 
the world as accidental tourists. They're discovering the world alongside with us, and we're going along with the adventure for them and opening up doors and, and unlocking things that are part that are off the hidden path. Uh, along with that convention comes having a supervillain that we introduced uh, in Sonic Boom, Lyric, who is a augmented snake, um, who was using the ancient technology to his benefit and was using it for the wrong reasons. And uh, the team discovers that, and there's some connection that we understand that we have to play the game to find out. I'm not going to spoil it for you. That uh, somehow Sonic was locked to his past from a thousand years ago. So we have to figure out what that is. But in, in an action adventure storyline, you know, you, this exploration is a big part of it. Combat is the second thing that we brought to the table, and that's something that is different for Sonic Universe. It was an evolution for us of looking at the bonk, you know, the, the spin dash. And uh, where do you take that if you're looking to advance it further? And to us, combat was a, was a natural uh, uh, step for that. And it also made sense for us because um, for a cooperative experience, we wanted to keep the, the players together as much as possible without limiting you in terms of the, the, the tethered together and the, the camera being very consistent. So we looked at other games, best in class, and we said that's not going to work for us to have a true action adventure where you're not making compromises. And that's the advantage of the Wii U because we were able to get on the CryEngine, which is not suited for character platforming. We were able to modify that. The team uh, modified it so, so we can have split screen. We didn't want to have split screen in such a way that was conventional because that would ruin the experience for us. So that's where the Wii U was very instrumental for the end vision. And that was to have dual display. So the one player has the, the one display on the main monitor and the, the other player has a, the display on the second monitor on the DRC. Yeah. And that, that allows us to really have that, the, the, the vision that Sega and we were really going after. Okay. When can people play it Wednesday? Uh, this holiday season, uh, the games are coming out, both 3DS and the Wii U is coming out in November 2014. Thank you very much for taking the time to talk. You bet. My pleasure. And that's how we do it.